And we back! Last week, I created a new NBA universe. You missed episode one and episode two. You gotta go back and get it, because this is episode three. I feel like there's such a gap between when I'm doing these episodes that I forget exactly what happened. I forget what draft class we loaded in. This is Kevin Durant, Greg Oden, Al Horford, Jeff Green, Yee Jillian, uh, Joe Kim Noah is in the league. Yes, sir. Mike Conley. Okay, so this is a, a decently deep draft class. A lot of these players played long NBA careers like uh, Josh McRoberts. Some of y'all might remember him. Or former Chicago Bull, Aaron Gray. Or Carl Landry. It's, it's a lot of decent players. And Marco Bellinelli. All right. Let's go to the NBA draft lottery. Will, will Kevin Durant be drafted second again? Uh, the Clippers first round pick might convey to the Denver Nuggets a part of what trade? They had to be trade that happened well before we were in the league because this team is not good enough to be trading away first round picks to get better. This free agency class is about to be real deep, by the way. I do want to say that this free agency class is about to be insane. Uh, all right, here we go. The winner of the lottery is the San Antonio Spurs, then the Chicago Bulls are second. And if you're wondering why this is a, this is a big deal. And if you wonder why it's a big deal, first of all, the Spurs had the highest percentage, but also the Spurs have um, uh, a guy by the name of LeBron James. So LeBron and Kevin could potentially be on the same team. Will they select them? I do not know the answer to that. The Bulls had a 4.3% a chance of the first overall pick. They jumped up to the second overall pick. So shout out to Bulls Nation, baby, we here. Um, the Mavericks have an additional first round pick via the Miami Heat and the Timberwolves have an additional first round pick via the Memphis Grizzlies. All I'm saying is if the Spurs don't draft KD but instead take Greg Oden, what a fumble again for Greg Oden going number one. All right, David Stern, what you saying? We Thaddeus Young? Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young is a first overall pick in my universe. Now, last video you saw when we loaded in the 2003 draft class, Willie Green got drafted before Chris Bosh. And some of y'all were like, Kenny, you got to fix You got to fix it. No. We see all the time in history a player goes higher than what they anticipated, and then they, we have people later in the draft end up being Hall of Famers. I'm not going to force Kevin Durant to go to the Spurs. They missed out on the opportunity. That's on them. That's on their scouting department because they thought that Thaddeus Young was the best player in this draft. Kevin Durant goes to the Bulls. <laughs> Kevin Durant goes to the Bulls. All right, I don't even remember who's on the Bulls nowadays, but now I'm super interested. It's Kevin Durant and Kevin Garnett, the Cavs, Alperin Shingoon. All right, this team won a championship three years ago or two years ago, whatever it was, and now they got the second overall pick in this year's draft. Kevin and Kevin. And Kevin Garnett got a no trade clause, cause he, so he ain't going nowhere. Third overall pick is Jeff Green going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Fourth overall pick is Greg Oden going to the Clippers. Fifth overall pick is AC Green. Sixth overall pick is Nick Young. Seventh overall pick is Mike Conley to the Dallas Mavericks. Al Horford goes to Atlanta, so that's fun. The Spencer Halls goes to the Timberwolves. Uh, Joe Kim Noah is a Laker. That's actually pretty good. Now, I don't know what version of Joe Kim Noah we're going to get. Will he ever be really, really good all-NBA player like in real life? I don't know. But the Lakers desperately needed center play. So them getting this center right now is actually pretty clutch, even though he's not going to come in elite or nothing. But Trey Young, Jalen Green, and they were doing the Sagan and Diop as their guy. And now it don't have to be him. Instead, it's going to be our guy Joe Kim Noah. They also should have some money to spend, so they might be free agency players. Yi Jillian goes 11th trade. No, Marcus Saul forgot he was even in this draft class. What a steal for the Blazers. And then Jason Smith. And lastly, Julian Wright completes the lottery. And let's see if there's anybody else. Corey Brewer, Jared Dudley. All right, Jay Dudd. Aaron Aflalo goes 19th to the Utah Jazz, teaming up with Luka Doncic. Aaron Brooks, former most improved player, goes to the Orlando Magic. All right, like I said, this, this fancy class is actually crazy. Now, I don't know who signed extensions or who's going to take options or qualifying offers, but based on what our... Okay, so yeah, a lot of people resigned already. Ben Wallace is the number one name out there. He might be going to the Wolves or the Nuggets or the Pacers or the Celtics or the Nets. He's 100% he's interested in every single team that offered him a deal. Every single team is 100% interested. Karam Butler at 26 is like he's going to the Wizards, which is where he was beforehand. So that's not that big of a deal. He stays there. Uh, Zach Randolph is just sitting out there. Now, he's switched teams a few times so far in this series. 
and he's good enough to get a nice contract, but nobody's offering it. Mike Miller uh, got two offers. Okay, I think a lot of people are gonna wait to see what Ben Wallace does, and then when he signs to an additional team, the teams that offer them some money go and use that money, and look, everybody's off the board. This is why I'm liking my simulation, by the way. You don't see really good players just sitting in free agency, so we're, do we're doing something good. Uh, I mean, we get decent players, like Trent Hassel or a younger Deshaun Stevenson are sitting here, but that ain't as bad as like in the other videos, we'd be having 85 overall players just sitting around. That doesn't exist. So Ben Wallace goes to the Wolves, he says, forget my time in Indianapolis. If you remember if you remember episode two, he was traded to Indy uh, to team up with Tim Duncan. And they struggled to stay healthy. And because of that, he switched rosters. Now, I should probably change some things about Ben Wallace because they got this man out here just doing stupid stuff. Why would Ben Wallace ever shoot 30% from the field? And he's not even attempting like three-point shots. He's just bad at the rim. He's, he's just bad at the rim. That makes no... And his shot tennis, he's not even high. Uh, do they, wait, did they... They got his mid-range shot high. Why? Why, 2K? Why would he ever do that? Yeah, look at look at all of those mid-range jump shots he's attempting. I don't understand that. Uh, Karan Butler stayed with the Wizards. The C's get this big Zebo. Uh, you know what? It's probably better if I just go to player progression and look at it that way. Because that'll give us an overarching view of every single team. I think the Lakers are probably one year away still, but their backcourt is really, really good. I would have loved for them to get out there and spend a little bit of money. They didn't really do that at all. Instead, they're still one of the youngest teams in the league. Dirk needs some help, man. Dirk needs some help. It's him and Corey Kisper. Come on, man. And, and Dirk, Dirk is one of those lawyer dudes. He'll never ask out. He'll never ask out. But, bro, he needs help ASAP. I like our league because there's parity. I'm looking at every single one of these teams, and there's no super-duper team. This seems actually really good, but there's no like team must be beat type team. Uh, ben Wallace dropped by three, but actually him teaming up with them and Minnesota's not bad. Paja, Ben Wallace, Baron Davis, Corey Maggetti, and, and Bagley, who's good. That's actually a really nice roster, man. I cannot lie. That is a really nice roster. Our defending champions look even better now because DeAndre Aiden is, wait, let me go back to it, but DeAndre Aiden looks really, really good. He's hit the 90 overall club for the first time in his career. He might average 20 points per game, and he's hitting a three-point shot. Different timeline, baby. Our defending champions look pretty good. Kobe is still the best player in the entire league. A lot of y'all were saying we got to get Kobe some help, and we might today. We might get Kobe some help. We just got to see how the league falls. Uh, Shea has got to the point where he's really good. This team looks kind of scary, I will not lie. Uh, they got Daniel Marshall starting at the Four, which is not bad because he stresses the floor for Shaquille O'Neal do his thing. He's 34, but he's still really good at 93. Kevin's, man. Now, the, the bad part is Kevin Garnett is 30, and it might take two, three years before KD is looking really, really good. But the Kevin's as a team looks kind of nice. Clippers don't look terrible. They're still maybe some time away. But Sharif Abdul-Rahim plus Jalen Suggs, who's pretty solid so far, 30 badges. That tells me that Jalen Suggs is about to be a stud eventually once he starts shooting the ball well. But Greg Oden, we don't know what version of Greg we're going to get. Is he going to be injury prone? Is he going to live up to, oof, already. He ain't even played an NBA game. But you can see he's got some neck problems, some hip and some knee problems already. He ain't even played a game yet. But yeah, Kobe could use some help, man. Kobe could use some help. Because uh, their starting point guard is this dude who was just drafted in the second round. So they are they are some, they are some places away, man. A little away. From uh, them being great. And I still believe the Knicks team should make some noise. Because they got Kenyon Martin. Who should be back eventually. And AI, Carmelo. And then all NBA player Tyson Chandler on their team. With Davion Mitchell who's like a stud. In this universe right now. So there's a lot to be done. And again every time I do one of these episodes. I'm looking through the comment section for suggestions. And I got some suggestions last uh, time. And I will be. Spinning a wheel to see what draft class we use. Oh no, I forgot. For y'all that do not know, at the beginning of every single season, we spin one of these to figure out what draft class is going next. And it looks like it's going to be 2011. Of course, 2011 uh, is <laughs> a pretty good one. I'm glad we actually got this. this. is a pretty good year. Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, Klay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Kimball Walker all end up being all NBA players at one point in their careers. We also got Vucevic down here. Um, and then some really good center play throughout the careers of these players. Tobias Harris is there. This is a really good draft class. Chandler Parsons exists. Uh, yeah, man, this is a draft. Oh, Isaiah Thomas, man, Mr. Mr. Irrelevant. So one of the main suggestions that I was uh, told is to watch more games when it came to uh, like the first and second round. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be a Game 7, but y'all are interested in those series too because, as y'all can see over the last couple episodes, the uh, the actual NBA Finals have been kind of duds. You know what I'm saying? Not a single close game sometimes. So we will get to some Game 1s and Game 2s of the first round just so we can see different players and see how they perform. But as always, we're going to simulate a couple months into the season. P.J. Brown for a first-round pick and a second-round pick. The Clippers, are, I don't think the Clippers are in, in any position to be trading a first-round pick right now. Unless they started off the season really hot and they like, we got to keep the gasoline. Yeah, that trade doesn't make sense for them. Uh, but also, the Lakers, hold on. The Lakers, Trey Young, is it, is it time? He's been leading the league in scoring for the last three seasons. I think it might be time. Oh, and he's no longer leading the league in scoring probably. That's a good thing. That means some other people are stepping up. That means Jalen Green stepped up. Please tell me Joe Kim is having a good season. We'll take it. We'll take it. All right. You know, we Joe Kim North fans around here. But I'm going to go to the deadline, see who's selling, see who rebuilding, and figure out exactly if there's any trades to be done. We're at the deadline, and the Lakers, the almighty Lakers, are here. The, I cannot believe it. I, I thought they were going to be a year away, but Trey Young and, and uh, Jalen Green, a smaller backcourt doesn't matter. They're getting it done. All right, so let's see what's going on across the association. This is my favorite part of it all. Um, the Magic are looking pretty good. I'm only really looking for, like... Whoa, nah, mm -mm. nope, nope, what did I say? Dirk is not one of those dudes. We're not trading Dirk. They're selling 50, 40, 90. Oh my God, Dirk is crazy. They're in the race though. I'm not, y'all not selling. Y'all are in the race. Stop playing. I know you're under 500. Only thing you have to sell is Dirk. Everybody else is young. I mean, I guess Michael Finley too. Ooh, Michael Finley's contract is kind of crazy. Michael Finley's contract's better than Dirk. Yeah, I mean, nah, y'all not, y'all not in the league of, uh, in the realm of selling. The Raptors are. Rashad Lewis. Last year of deal, Rashad Lewis feels like a player that has to be moved. Look at these splits. Look at his production. He's a player that 100% should be moved if you're a selling team, considering everybody else between Jalen Johnson, A.C. Green, and DeAnthony Melton are super young. Um, and then you also got Willie Green, who you drafted over. Well, Willie, Green's look, Willie Green has looked good so far in year two. Uh, you drafted him over, of course, Chris Bosh, notoriously. So, um, Rashad Lewis is a guy that should be on the move. Okay, good to know. That is one selling team. Here's another. Oh, yeah, because you drafted Thaddeus Young over Kevin Durant. Thaddeus Young's rookie season. Okay. Uh, the numbers ain't crazy. Come on, Braun. Year two Braun should be a lot better than 84, right? Was it year three when he goes with craziness and hit 90? I don't know. Um, Mikhail is actually averaging a dub, too, but they are so far away. But they could get Kawhi. They could get... A lot of different people. Oh, the Bulls are just bad, bro. They're just bad. Kevin Durant, rookie season, doing great. But KG is just, they're just not, they don't have enough. They got Eddie Jones here. It's just not enough to win a bunch of games. They're about to be right back in the lottery. Hopefully they get Kyrie or something. Because they, yeah, they are ways away. I mean, as of right now, there's only one selling team in the league. And that that is this team. No, nope, not that team. I'm sorry. This team that has Rashad Lewis. So let's figure out the home for Rashad Lewis. Now, notoriously, he can play the three and the four. Uh, so we got to figure out a team that would be interested in a, again, one-year rental with the potential of court. Kevin, oh my God, Tyson Chandler and company. They got Jalen Rose old self starting over Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo might win six men of the year with these numbers. I won't lie. I'm not going to tell them to change it. It's, it's working out at least enough for them to be the three seed. And then Jalen Rose is 34 years old. And on the last year of his deal, Carmelo's going to take that spot next season. We're looking for a team that could bulk 38 and 9, Luca. 38 and 9 is insane. It's got to be a team. Kobe needs help, man. Kobe needs help. There's got to be a team out there that can think like, e either, even if it's not a one year rental, they believe that they can resign him, maybe. Do the Pacers do it again? Are the Pacers the only team out there that really be out here buying at the deadline? They're a really good team, once again. Um,. Even though they lost Kevin, nope, they lost uh, Ben Wallace. They're starting Tiago Splitter right now. And this trade allows them to move Timmy to the five, put Rashad Lewis at the four, and then run that lineup. All of these other teams feel like they're kind of set. I mean, the Lakers aren't trading future first round capital for one year of Rashad Lewis, right? Yes, they are. It's the Lakers. It's the Lakers. Yes, they are. Because there's a world you can just resign. I keep thinking in these words of like, oh, he's a free agent, so he's going to 100% switch to the next team. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. They could genuinely bring him back. You already got the contracts to match by just giving up Grant, uh, Grant Hill. You throw in Josh Primo. Or, ooh, 
Josh Primo's not too bad for them this season. You throw in Gary Trent Jr., boom, you got a young asset, and then one first-round pick unprotected for this year. Like, they have to assume that they're not getting a crazy amount of value because he's on the last year of his deal, you know? And he's not even, like, an all-star. He's having a really good year. But he ain't been an all-star this year or last year. Oh, he was an all-star. <laughs> hold on, he was an all-star. Hold on, hold on. All right, all right, hold on. Um, okay, so instead of this year, it's the next year's pick because y'all good this year. Boom. You bet on the fact that next year they won't be able to resign him and they won't replicate this. We got a deal. Rashad Lewis is now an L.A. Laker, and just like that, he fits right in with the other guys in the team. Not, I don't. Look, I can't say that they're going to compete, but they look like a team that's going to be interesting at least. Yeah, and as always, when we have stuff like this, I'm not just looking for the big trade every single time. I'm also looking for rebuilding teams that might want to throw out a one-year rental to an older player or something like that. Like I'm, I'm looking around the league, and I don't show y'all every single trade we do because I don't think every single trade is like super big. All right, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for this deadline. You saw how crazy Luca was. He won MVP. 23 years old, the youngest MVP in the association's history. Um, and he's been doing his thing. Kevin Durant does win Rookie of the Year, averaging 22, 5, and 3. Uh, Dwayne Wade wins Sixth Man of the Year. Uh, him and Carmelo will be starting next season, 100%. Tim Duncan continues to win DPOYs. Most improved goes to Kay Cunningham, who averaged how many? 31, 8, and 4. Sheesh, Kay. Uh, all right, all right. All NBA teams are here. Second team, third team. Trey Young makes it. Uh, defensive teams. Defensive teams, rookie teams, cool. Al Thornton, wow. They created Big Al, and he had a good rookie season. All right. And Al Horford, too, also had a decent rookie season. All right, the playoffs. Let's see. Western Conference sees the Warriors be the worst team. Um, they do have Colin Sexton. Oh, this is year four for Colin Sexton? Dang. Oh, this was the first draft class we loaded in. Right, right, right. So, yeah, it makes sense that he's year four. Um, there is a huge, they lost 15 straight games to end the season. Man, they really, really want Kawhi. Or they really, really want Kyrie or Klay Thompson or Kemba Walker or one of those dudes. Because, God, they are the worst team in the league by far. All right. Uh, then the Raptors are also really, really bad, too. And they sold last deadline. So, you know, they also drafted AC Law and Willie Green. Sometimes you go have organizations that are perennially at the bottom because they don't draft very well. But the, the best team um, in the East is the Pistons. But the Pacers are there, too. The Pacers are there, too. The Knicks ended their season on a 10-game winning streak. And they do have Carmelo Anthony in the starting lineup. All right, Melo. It's your time to shine, baby. He actually started the majority of the season. So, I don't mean, uh, when we looked in at the halfway point, he wasn't starting for whatever reason. But he has been starting for the good majority of the year. So, yeah, this team looks fun. They, looks, they look interesting. 10-game win streak is crazy. Uh, Sharif Cooper's an 80 overall. For some reason, they don't have his passing really high. Uh, whatever. This team is still really good. They're small now. They're small up front with 6'2 and 6'1. But you, you got y'all man. So, like, what can you really say? Uh, out west, the, like, you, like you saw, the Utah Jazz were really good. Um, they have the MVP of the league at the 1. And then they got depth, man. They got a lot of center depth, but they got depth for sure. Ayuda Sumo's on the roster and Aaron Aflalo. And the uh, Sonics are back. Oh, no, 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 not back, not back. They made the trade for Jason Kidd last year. This might be their, their season, too, because they look really good. All right, how do we want to play this? The Bobcats make a playoff appearance. Shout out to Kay Cunningham, because look at that roster around him. That's not a roster that should be making a playoff push. Um, And because it's, it looks so bad, I feel like we shouldn't have to watch a game of this series because, boy, it's, it's not really... It don't even look really that close. Evan Mobley and Wendell Carter versus Tim Duncan is a cool matchup. That's a cool matchup. But game one was a blowout in the favor of the Orlando Magic. All right. So we have the new look Timberwolves, who again spent money to get Ben Wallace on the team, going against the Hornets, who have Elton Brand, Mike Bibby, and James Booknight. Uh, you could tell, whoa, the Hornets are the higher seed. I wonder if that has to do with the division stuff. The Hornets are the higher seed. Um, no, they were just better. I'm actually surprised at that. Because if you look at the rosters on paper, the Wolves definitely like the better team. But it ended up being the Hornets. I really do want to see the Sonics team play basketball. Uh, they're going to get Scotty Barnes and Pau Gasol and Shane Battier. I just want to see what like in-game Jason Kidd looks like. Because I feel like he's going to be nasty. But if they don't give us a close game, then yeah, it might not happen. Bucks Wizards... Um, the Wizards are really good, but their starting point guard is lacking. 
But the Bucks, man, I gotta see the Bucks play. I gotta see Shaq. I gotta see Shaq. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta see Shaquille O'Neal versus DeAndre Aiden. Because Aiden, again, are, is really good. And it's not close. It's not gonna be the game we see that. It's not gonna be the game we see that. All right, whatever. Gilbert Arenas versus Luka Doncic looks pretty cool. You know, those are two of the top point guards in the league going at each other. And this is why it's a little bit tougher because it's so hard to find real close games. And I'm definitely not jumping in if it's a 10 point game. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we do see the underdog win a bunch of the games so far in this first round. So that's good to know. Right now, we're on pace to have the most boring first round of all time because we haven't got close to any close games. And that ended up being a close game, but it wasn't at the same time. The Knicks advance in five. Hopefully, the next round, we see some close games there. Magic versus Pacers also is on the brink of ending. Wasn't close. Shaq and company get eliminated. I, I Again, I really wanted to see it, but it just never happened. Uh, which is that's just frustrating, man. It's frustrating because I do believe... So, we've seen Yao Ming play um, a couple games so far in the simulation, and he always is just dominated. I wonder if Shaq has that same pressure applied to, to the opposing teams. This one is also a blowout in the favor of the higher seed. And you can kind of see why I don't be showing first rounds because this this <laughs> these first round games don't be on nothing. We do have a game seven. I wish game six was good, but it wasn't. Um, MVP Luca just whoo he put a stinker together. Redemption time. Do not lose as the one seed, baby. Do not lose as the one seed to the eight seed. It's close enough that we could be interested. It's close enough that we could be interested. Six point game. It's no longer close. Eight point game. Oh, boy. And the higher seed does end up winning. Luca came back and said, hey, I saw what y'all was talking on ESPN. It's not, I'm not like that. You know that. You know I'm better. So the young Lakers are going against um, Mike Bibby and company. Did they have another player? They Don't tell me they lost a player. Hey, injuries happen. Injuries happen. No, they're healthy. Huh. All right. <laughs> All righty there. This is a crucial game because somebody's on the brink of getting swept right now. And come on, keep it close, keep it close, keep it close. Yes, keep it close. Good. We get our first jump in of the video. It took forever. It took forever. But we here. Story of the game is Elton Brand is dominating and Jalen Green is having a good game. Uh, Trey Young has 16 assists and one turnover, but he's not scoring as much. Joe Kim Noah has three blocks and three assists and stuff like that. And yeah, this is somebody's getting potentially getting swept. And if you're going to ask me, Kenny, who's on the brink of getting swept? I, I don't remember the answer. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember the answer. But hey, we got sound. Joe Kim Noah with the tip lay in, and it puts them up by six with two and a half minutes to go. That's my boy, uh, Joe Kim Noah. All right, Mike Bibby bringing the ball up the court. One of the few people in the association without generics on. And, well, okay, so the people that were there when the season started, the first episode, most of them are going to have generics on. Most of them. Everybody else added in every draft class will start to have real shoes different shoes or whatever um but yeah this this team has a few of those guys kata bates diop being guarded by rashad lewis who again was a deadline acquisition there's a screen kata bates diop getting downhill going over marcus pfizer and he missed it got his own board goes back up for a second chance and is back to a four point game huge bucket with two minutes to go for real mike bibby and trey young are having a battle i guess um, Jalen Green is not in the game, but this is our opportunity to make that happen. There we go. I'm going to make sure that both teams, or try to make sure that both teams have their preferred lineups in. Where Trey Man, you're good and all, but you, you, you're, not, you're not on the level of this man right here. So because of that, you're gone. You're going to the bench. Like Bibby get back in the game. They tried to take him out. This is, this is potentially a win-and-go-home game for y'all. Potentially. Because, again, I don't remember who's... <laughs> Somebody's back is against the ropes right now and fighting to stay alive. Who is that? Oh, can we? Ch I think we could probably check that out, can't we? So, yeah, the Lakers are up 3-0. That's, that's what it is. All right, so the Lakers are up 3-0, uh, and they have a four-point lead. So, yeah, the Hornets have to do everything they can in their power to keep this series and season alive because if they don't, then, oh, my God, he just walked through his whole coaching staff. If they don't, then the season is over. The season is over. Rashad Lewis with the ball. He gives it up to trigger Trey Young. All right, let's see what Trey Young does. He takes a open three. That's an open three. Now, it was, it was leaning. But it was an open three, and he missed it. The Hornets are winning a rebound battle, but losing the game. Mike Bibby straight to the basket. It is a one-possession game, ladies and gentlemen. He, oh, he gets a replay. He's got the J zone. What are we replaying, though? Okay, there it is. Yeah, get around that corner. Trey Young too little. Joe Kim Noah late to the party. He got the J zone. Okay, Mr. Bibby. I see you. I see you. All right, Jalen Green now with the ball. Being guarded by James Booknight, I think that is. I'm pretty sure Rashad Lewis with the ball with Katie Bates Diop. 
on the defense. Violation. Did he just travel? I don't have sound. Y'all have sound. I don't have sound. They might have just told. I think he might have traveled. I think he moved that pivot foot. Potentially. Maybe. All right, Mr. Bibby. It's been your show so far. Um, Elton Brand's kind of sitting at the perimeter the whole time. Why? Don't ask me. That's definitely not what his game is at. Okay, there's a screen. They freed up Mike Bibby, but they missed him. Instead, it goes to Nice Muhammad. And, okay, they're swinging it to get it to Mike Bibby. Mike Bibby guarded by Trey Young, who's, of course, not a great defender. Mid-race jumper, Mike Bibby. That's a good look, Mr. Bibby. But he missed it. Minute and a half to go. Trey Young for three. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I wouldn't have said that would have iced the game, but it would have been very close to icing the game, potentially. K to base D, i doing some extra stuff. Dribble, dribble, dribble. He has a mismatch. Give it to Mr. Bibby. He's being guarded by Joe Kim Noah. Or give it to Najee Muhammad, who's guarded by Trey Young. Three-point shot. K to base D, up. No good. Najee Muhammad, he puts it up and in. Tie game. Minutes to go. Najee Muhammad, he's a Gatorade break, but that don't matter. That don't matter. All right, Trey Young. Dude, he does. Step back three. Trey Young missed it. Marcus Pfizer. Over all NBA Elton Brand like he doesn't exist. Like he doesn't exist. Why is Kate of HD up to point four? Okay, timeout. 53 seconds to go in the game. Two point lead because Marcus Pfizer got an offensive board over Elton Brand. Here we go. Inbound goes to Kate of HD up because it's his team, apparently. We haven't seen Elton Brand touch the ball once. Oh, no, we have seen him touch the ball once. And we also just see Nazi Muhammad go from hero to zero with that offensive. Uh, Offensive foul. And now, still a lot of time to play good defense and get out of here and still win this game. But Nazi might have set them up. Trey Young with the ball. I'm assuming it's about to be a step back three from Trey Young because that's all he's taken so far. Mike Bibby on the defense. Here's Jalen Green coming off a screen. No pass there. Downhill for Trey Young going to at Nazi. And he is fouled. Nazi with two huge fouls down the stretch. One offensive, one defensive. Trey Young hits the first free throw. Trey Young, what are you going to do with the second one? Big one, and it is good. I don't think they have any timeouts left. K to base D up. I'm so confused on why he's getting the passes and not Mike Bibby. They let him set the offense up. He goes right at Rashad Lewis's chest, misses and gets it back himself, goes up again. And that's going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. The Hornets get swept out of the second round behind, I don't know, Marcus Pfizer. Had a bucket. It, it was a kind of uneventful jump in, but a jump in is a jump in nonetheless. 3-1 lead for the Wizards over the Knicks. Oh, man, Knicks fans. I thought this might have been the year that y'all could make some real noise. I guess it's still possible. You got to win this game, though. And it looks like y'all going to do that. It looks like you're going to do that. All right, so you're going to go out of there and win this game. The Lakers making it to the conference finals right now. It's actually a big story across the association. After years of them just being awful and hoping that Trey Young gets some help, he finally got it a little bit. Um, yeah, this I thought that that game had a chance, but it didn't. Ayu Sumu was the leading scorer, and that's why y'all lost, Luca. <laughs> AK-47 with almost a triple-double. This also is a 3-1 lead um, game, and I think the lower seed is the one that's up right now. So, opportunity for them to close it out. It don't look like it's happening right now. It's not close enough for us to jump into. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the lower seed winning. And the two-time champion, the Detroit Pistons, losing the second round to Tim Duncan and Cump. Tim Duncan and them are here. They said, forget. Who did they lose? Forget you, Ben Wallace. We could do it without you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Another potential closeout game. This is a game six between the New York Knicks and the Wizards. And I'm a little bit late to the party. But I'm at the party. Knicks are down 3-2. Um, they just have a bunch of players that are not having great games. A lot of turnovers. On the other side, Vince Carter's having a great game. So... The Knicks need this game to keep their season alive. Down by three with a minute to go in it. Uh, Allen Iverson, get him the ball, baby. Let's see A.I. Cook. He's been guarded by Jose Calderon. I feel like that's a Cook session waiting to happen. He gets straight to the basket like there was nobody there. A one-point game. Yeah, you can show the replay on that because what the heck is this defense, Washington? Straight down memory lane, down for a layup. Not a contest in sight for Mr. Collins. Not a contest in sight. Who is that, Booze Cruz? It's a lot of buckets at the basket if you ask me. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, are we closing out the are we closing out the game without good players on the court? If you the Wizards, what's going on? Yeah, what is happening? They have Boozer in at the two, Ron Butler in now. Yeah, they were tripping, bro. Got to do it for the Knicks too, of course. Keep it keep it simple, keep it right, because yeah, I didn't even realize where are the players that we care about. Forget this Trent Hassu and all of these dudes. No way. Where's Carmelo? 
There's Carmelo. Put your best roster forward, man. All right, so everybody's got their best lineup in. Beautiful. Minutes ago in the game, Jose Calderon is still the best point guard on the roster. Still the best point guard on the roster. There's Karan Butler for three. Bang! Karan Butler puts the Wizards up by four with a minute to go. Could that have been the dagger? It's a lot of time left. Here's Allen Iverson trying to get downhill on Vince Carter. That is a terrible shot, Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen. Um, that's awful. Uh, and that might have cost y'all y'all season because Vince Carter just pulled up for three. He missed it. Oh, that was almost an offensive rebound for Bulls Cruz. All right, we're still in this. We're still in this, New York. Allen Iverson, that is an easy bucket. All right, AI. All right, man. A defensive stop in a bucket is a tie game, baby. A defensive stop in the bucket. Oh, my God, there's no sound. A defensive stop in the bucket is a tie game. Vince Carter straight down the lane. Tyson Chandler. Oh, I looked away because somebody was, like, outside my window. And what, what did I just miss? <laughs> I don't, let's see, let's see. What the heck did I miss? So, we see an attempt of going against Tyson Chandler, who's an all-defensive center. Missed it. And he was able to go up on a second leap and snag that board and go straight up off vert. That's Vince Sanity. And it is back to a two-possession game. Here we go. Allen Iverson. Oh, my God. He did pass it. I was going to say his A button doesn't work, but he does pass it. But he gets it right back, and he's posting up Vince Carter. Oh my god, Allen Iverson is a dog. I was about to say the season is over. But Allen Iverson just proved me and everybody wrong. And they still have a world where they can win this game, baby. You get a stop. There's a, what, a couple second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And they do pull off the foul. Do they have one to give? No, that puts Vince Carter at the line. Okay. Vince Carter's up. And it is in. Huh, there was like a maybe three to four second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And I thought that might have been enough for them to go get a shot if they got a stop. But both of the free throws are in, and they had a timeout? That's questionable to me. All right, it's still in a world where things go well. You just got to get a quick shot off. Maybe foul, cause a miss, whatever, whatever. Here's a screen from Tyson Chandler. If they go under, he's pulling. what I tell you? If they go under, he's pulling. Allen Iverson missed it. And just like that, the season is over for the New York Knicks. We didn't see one Carmelo Anthony basket. One Carmelo Anthony attempted basket. It was none of that. It was all Allen Iverson. Some some people might not like that, but you have to remember Carmelo was just 20 years old. Josh Christopher was great all series long, actually. Um, wow. All right, Josh Christopher, I see you. Turn it to somebody there. Knicks have been eliminated. All right, Luke and company are one game away from meeting the Lakers in the conference finals. Will they get there? And please be close. It looks like we might get a game. It looks like we might get a game. It looks like we might get a game. Four points, six points, five points. We got a game seven. We got a game seven. And hey, I'm here for it. A 2-4 series on the other side, potentially a 2-4 series on this side too. We do have to see what happens at home in Utah versus Seattle. And it is it is good. It is looking good for Seattle. Nine point game with 30 to go. Seattle just pulled off a comeback and won this series behind just good team play. Allen Houston, 16 points in 16 minutes. He knew exactly when to wake the heck up. He's 36 years old. He's still giving you buckets. And just like that, we do have our conference finals set. If you need a reminder, it is Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Jason Richardson, who's a crazy playoff player, versus the Wizards. So again, the Wizards look really, really good on, on this. And on the other side, it's Amari Stoudemire, AK-47, Josh Giddy, and Jason Kidd versus Trey Young and Jalen Green. Are the, are the uh, Seattle Sonics about to make a finals appearance? Uh, maybe not, because Trey Mann has been had had a few games. He's had a few games so far in this playoff run. And the Lakers, I didn't even realize, have only lost one game on their trip to the conference finals so far. So they've been low-key kind of dominant, even though this is not a team that you look at and think dominance. All right, let's see what we got, man. This is a potential winner-go-home game. It's a potential winner-go-home game. Is it close? It is not close at all, and the Indiana Pacers fall short again. Tim Duncan, we need more than that, big fella. And the Wizards, who won last year's championship, are back in the NBA Finals. Will they see the Seattle Supersonics, or will they see the LA Lakers? The Lakers are up 3-2, and that was a super convincing win. And this is potentially the closeout game, y'all. This is potentially the closeout game. We're in Seattle with it. Come on, I want to see that court, so please let it be close. I want to see that court, and it's not going to be. The Lakers have made it to the NBA Finals. The Rashad Lewis pickup is legendary. The greatest 
uh, off. I'm sorry, deadline acquisition in the French in the not the franchise history in the league history. This one, game one, is a convincing win for the Lakers. I cannot believe they are three games away from doing it. I can again, a lot of things can happen. The Wizards are the defending champions, and they are really, really good as we've seen. But they are they might not be able to do it. Man. All right. So the Lakers go into Washington and take both games. And now they're going back to the Staples Center with all of the confidence in the world. Plus, a, this is a, this is about to be a bet. Oh, man. I just every single one of our finals have been duds. Every single one of our finals since the first episode have been duds. 3-0 series lead for the LA Lakers. It looks like they're going to walk out of here as NBA champions. But the Wizards, come on, fight, man. They're not fighting anymore. A sweep, bro? They lost three games on the route here. And Trey Young went from ha, 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 all he do is just score, the team is bad, to la last year, they didn't make, this is a crazy one-year jump for the LA Lakers. Last year, they were towards the, they were 33 and 49. And they just won the NBA championship by drafting Joe Kim Noah, which is something. I mean, it ain't like he was doing nothing crazy. And then trading for Rashad Luke. The, this is the greatest acquisition at the deadline ever in our in the league history. That is in. Same. Social media is now a thing. So we're looking out for tweets. Because social media is now a thing. <laughs> Here we go to the NBA draft lottery. Um, the Warriors have the highest chance. Did the Spur weren't the Spurs really, really bad? Right? Did they turn it around? They they were one game away one game away from making the playoffs. They were really, really bad. He's like, oh, they're gonna get another star. Nope, they had a ridiculous second half of the season, apparently, and I didn't even peep. I didn't even peep it. Right, well, the lottery gods are in the favor of the Warriors, and the Bulls jump up again. This is the second year in a row where the Bulls jump up. They had a 9% chance, and they ended up number three again. So they, they jump up to get Kevin, and they're about to jump up to get, like, Kyrie, Klay Thompson, Kimball Walker, or somebody like that. That's insane. The 76ers had a okay so the one and two picks stay the same the raptors drop um and then the hawks stay so everybody everything else is the same whoa all right we're gonna go through the draft and then i'm gonna pause and then come back the, the video continues for you but i need to take a break and eat lunch and all of that stuff here we go first overall pick the warriors select Kawhi leonard now the warriors don't really have much right now you know the, the warriors have colin sexton nick young and Jaden springer they need a star to come in. They also extended uh, Richard Hamilton. And remember, they ended the season on what, a 10, 15 game loser streak? They could use Kawhi Leonard right now. And it could not happen to a team that needed it more. Kawhi Leonard's now on the roster. Second overall pick is going to be Kyrie Irving to the 76ers. I don't even remember what the 76ers have. Ray Allen on the last year of his deal. Um, they're an old team right now, they're an old and bad team. The last lottery pick they had was Darko, and Darko don't look like he's doing crazy stuff. So now they get Kyrie Irving to come to the city of brotherly love. Third overall pick is Klay Thompson to the Bulls. So Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson and Kevin Garnett are together. If that's not a playoff team next season, now, now uh, Klay's probably coming in with like a 77, 78. So never mind. It might take him a few years. But they're, they're building something. They're building something. Next. We have Jonas Valanciunas ended up with the Raptors. Fitting, fitting. Fourth overall pick. I'm sorry, fifth overall pick is the Atlanta Hawks selecting Jimmy Butler. And if I'm not mistaken, they had Al Horford last year. It seemed like they put in something together. Michael Porter Jr. up for a new contract. Same thing with Kirk Heinrich. This team might be kind of decent next year. They're still, they're still young. Brandon Boston Jr., Kyle Korver. They're still young, but the, the addition of Jimmy Butler is probably going to help them a ton. Kimball Walker goes to the Miami Heat. Then we see Vucevic is teaming up with Kobe. Man, um, Tristan Thompson goes to the Dallas Mavericks. And his freedom goes to the different Nuggets. A trade? Potential trade? Somebody's trading up. 10th overall pick for the 12th overall pick. Let's see. Bismack Biombo. All right, they a big fan of Busy down there. Bryce Harris goes to the Rockets. Alec Burks. Uh, Markeith Morris. Marcus Morris, are you coming, coming to the team anytime soon? Nope. Marcus Morris does not get selected in the lottery. 
Um, and that's all we see. We only care about the lottery. Marcus Morris, where did you end up getting picked? 18th to the Seas. All right. Bogdanovich ends up going there. Isaiah Thomas and Orlando Magic. If I'm not mistaken, that's the second year in a row where the Orlando Magic got somebody later in the draft that was good. Kevin Herter, uh, Aaron Brooks was last year, right? Aaron Brooks was last year. He hasn't uh, amounted to a single minute yet. But hey, may, 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 maybe in some time. So I'm going to save right now. I'll be right back. Lunch has been made. Eight showered. We are back to grind uh, your 2007-2008 season, ladies and gentlemen. All right, free agency is here. And it is a big restricted free agency year. The only unrestricted guys out here is Amari Sotomayor with zero offers. He's 24, by the way. So, I mean, anybody that's picking him up is is really coming through and doing some great stuff. AK-47, also unrestricted. But for the most part, we got a huge restricted free agency pool. I wonder if any of those dudes going to switch teams. I guess, it's, I guess it's possible. All of them are gone three days into free agency. The Jazz retain. Everybody has retained their talent so far. Amari Stoudemire, I'm pretty sure he played that last year. Yes, so they retained Amari Stoudemire. AK-47... Goes from Seattle to Charlotte. Oh, I'm sorry, New Orleans. So that is a huge, huge um, thing in their association because he's really good. I don't know if he's been an all-star just yet. I would assume not. Uh, no, he was a one-time all-star. The Pistons retained their guy. So the champion Lakers, they got their ring. That's all that really matters. They retain uh, uh, Trey Young but lose Rashad Lewis to Atlanta. And we were just talking about how Atlanta was low-key kind of building something, right? Atlanta had... Uh, Michael Porter Jr., and then they drafted Jimmy Butler. Okay, it's not the greatest fit. But Rashad Lewis being 16 can make it happen. 16, Michael Porter Jr., they can both play at the same time. They can both start. I mean, he's just 27. He's just 27. So with the player progression and stuff, they might be all right. I wonder if this team is going to contend again. You know? I mean, they could do the same thing every every deadline. and be like, hey, we're buyers. One-year rental. That's enough to get us a championship. But Trey Young is about to be, I'm sorry, Trey Young has been overtaken by Jalen Green as the guy. As the guy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Higher overall, Jalen Green. His backcourt is crazy. And Joe Kim Noah is really good, too. Uh, hopefully, he shoots better from the field this time around. Dirk is still there by himself. Him and now Bismack Biombo. He's still there by himself, man. Oh, I, I feel for him. I feel for him, you know. Just be, being loyal is great. It could potentially win you something down the line. But now he is almost in his 30s. And they ain't made a playoff appearance just yet. So that's something. Tim Duncan and company, they're losing. Uh, oh, they signed Jalen Green, who's losing overall. Um, and then Jason Richardson is also losing overall at 26. Why? I don't know. But, man, has Jason Richardson been on a run these last couple seasons. Almost 28, 27, and almost 26. Great efficiency. Jason Richardson, one of the best players in the association. Also, he had a 50-point playoff game, if you all remember last episode. So, he's been really doing his thing. Jalen Johnson is the best player on the team right now. I'm going to make sure I get his shot tendency up to at least average. Because if he's the best player, who going to stop him from shooting? I don't know. We may see a different side of Jalen Johnson. LeBron, Mitchell Robinson. Was he, was he here the whole time? No. So, Mitchell Robinson was a restricted free agent. And they did not. Denver did not match the offer sheet. So, that's a huge pickup for them. Because now they can run legit Braun at the... I'm going to say Braun at the 1. Even though he's taking forever to get better. He's not even 90 overall yet. What's going on, Braun? Braun at the 1. Mikhail, Franz, Thaddeus Young, former first overall pick if you forgot. And then Mitchell Robinson. That, that start at 5 is playoff worthy. They were one game away from doing it last year. They might actually do it now. Dwayne Wade should be starting at the 1. I'm going to make sure that everybody's playing positions that they should in order for them to do the best thing. And I think that Dwayne Wade starting at the point guard is the thing. He's averaged about seven assists per game, so we know he's capable of his, his backup position as point guard. It's, it's time for him to transition to that because, yeah, they, they have to do what they have to do. Um, the Seattle Supersonics, who were really close last year, see Jason Kidd get an extension. Four years, $71 million. At the end of this contract, he, he will be uh, 38 years old. But he's been killing the game. So you can't even complain about it. And he only regressed by one at the age of 34. That means that he's going to be cool for at least a couple of those years. The Timberwolves look really, really good. If Bagley's going to continue to do this, if Bagley's going to continue, he won most approved player. He made an all-NBA team. If he's going to continue to progress like this, they got something really nice here with him and Spencer Halls, I guess. Uh, the Trailblazers. They, uh, the Trailblazers are existing. This team was a finals team. They lost, but they were in the finals a couple years ago, and now they just, I almost use the word fell off, but they have not been uh, good. In a, let's just say they haven't been good in a minute. So Kay Cunningham um, has been amazing, right? He's been amazing. He averaged 31 points last year. 
He had the most points in a single game last season, which I think 53. He had a 53-point game this year. He's been phenomenal, and they still haven't done enough to put things around him. Darko is now, good, like, he's done progressing at 20 years old. I guess I could have told them that. Um, yeah, this team is not good, but you have Kay Cunningham, and, and he's enough. They were a playoff team, y'all. He brought this team, this roster to a playoff appearance. That's something. Kobe, still the best player in the league. Last year of the deal for Kobe. The Kobe sweepstakes might be crazy. He uh, uh, He's undoubtedly been the, one of the best players in the association. He's just haven't had any help at all. So now he's going to be 29 at the end of this contract in the year. And it might be time for him to switch. Tracy McGrady, also free agent. They had a run where they were in the conference finals, but ultimately lost. Uh, to Kevin Gardner, this free agency class is about to be crazy. The question is how many of them sign extensions during the season. Same thing with Dirk. How many of them sign extensions? Oh, my God. Allen Iverson? Bro, is this the greatest free agency class ever, potentially? Like, for real, this has potential to be the... Kobe, T-Mac, KG... Dirk and Allen Iverson. Those are all the 90 plus overall players that are not restricted. That's an insane, that's an insane group. And Elton Brand is going to be there too. So like that is a really, really crazy group of players. Kyrie Irvin was was draft, just drafted. Okay. I thought he didn't regress or pr progress. He just got drafted. We're, we're fine. They're fine. Um, you also see Shaq get two times worse. Not two times worse. Two overalls worse. But Shea is still getting slightly better every single season. This team, again, has a lot of potential. I think they elim got eliminated in the conference finals or the second round this year. So they still have potential to be great. Um, the they signed Colin Sexton. That's a pickup. Because Colin Sexton has been really, really good. He's been really, really good. Um, and now they have a point guard. They, they drafted Clay. So their lineup is Colin Sexton, Clay Thompson, Kevin and Kevin, and then Al P. Al P playing alone KG is like the perfect match. Because you ain't got to worry about his defense because KG is one of the greatest offensive guys of all time. The Bulls should make a playoff appearance. And if they don't, I'm disappointed. You know what time it is. It is time to spin to see what draft class we load in next. It will be uh, 2016. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. This team went from contending to 13th seed, man. I just want... This team looks too good to be this bad. Nash, SGA, RJ, and Shaq? And they're the 13th seed, man. That's unfortunate. The Bulls are back in action, ladies and gentlemen. KG's only averaging uh, 18, but I guess they don't need him to do anything. Colin Sexton's got 20. Kevin Durant is averaging 21. Oh, okay, boys. Klay Thompson, 14 points uh, in his young career. The Bulls are back, baby. I'm so happy. The Cavaliers, um, they, they think they're rebuilding, but right now your rebuilding got you in a playoff spot, guys. Congratulations. The Grizzlies are all <laughs> the Grizzlies are always buying. This man re-upped his contract, bro. Why? Why? Do you trade Tim Thomas? He's upset and y'all are buying? You gotta do something, right? You, you gotta get Kobe somebody. He didn't he didn't re-sign. I know y'all are not good. Uh you're, you're quite a ways away. But if Kobe's re-signed, you gotta go help Kobe. And they say they buying, so I'm going to buy about that. If y'all are buying, then we're going to see if there's a team selling to get you something. This Hawks team is a playoff team like we anticipated. They look real good. Um, 16 points per game there, 20 points per game there. Al Horford just averages the same numbers every single season. The captain, only five assists per. Jimmy Butler, what you doing? 13. All right, like to see that. Uh, here's a rebuilding team. Do you have stuff worth trading for? Safan Marbury and Kobe Bryant, but he's 30 and Kobe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. We did adjust the shot, Tennessee. We ain't make it crazy. But he's the best player on the team, so he deserves to take the most shots, right? Val also, yeah, he should be taking a lot of shots. There's not a single selling team in the association right now. Even the worst team, even the worst team said they're just rebuilding. They're not selling or anything. Even though Rip on the four-year deal, four-year extension, I mean, you might be able to get some value out of that. Uh, cause you got Kawhi rookie season. He's looking solid. Um, and they, y'all just aren't going to be good anytime soon. So they're six and 41. I didn't even see that six and 41. Are y'all serious? This is the day of the deadline. There's not a single selling team out there. I don't think there's a big deal to be done. We do a couple small ones, but the, there's no big deal to be done for the first time. This is the deadest deadline of them all. And that's okay. In real life, every single trade deadline don't see an all-star get traded. So I think that's what we're going through right now. 
just one of those years where the people that are bad are just bad and the people that are good are just good. We just we just ride with it. Luca does it again. Kawhi Leonard wins the rookie of the year. Oh, Josh Christopher. Didn't we tell Josh Christopher to make something of himself? Here he is on his third team. And the last two years, he's, I mean, I guess this whole career he's been good, but he hasn't been able to find a home until now. They've welcomed him in New York. LeBron had a 58-point game this season. Um, Kay Cunningham hit 12 threes in the game. What else is a crazy stat? F uh, 25 rebounds for uh, Kevin, nope, for Tim Duncan. Uh, Kevin Garnett did have an 11 offensive rebound game. 22 assists from Jay Will. Some blocks and steal numbers from LeBron. And then minutes placed, 51 with Dwayne Wade. Tim Duncan was DPL wagon. He's just winning it every single season. I mean, look at that. Look, at it. he's 31. That uh, trophy case is kind of crazy. And most approved goes to Mike Sweetney. Whoa, it's a name I have not seen or heard in a very long time. And what it wasn't Jalen Johnson. It should have been Jalen Johnson. I, I'm gonna make it Jalen Johnson. No, Jalen Johnson, real life though, um, had a ridiculous season. Or not? He didn't qualify. Okay. All right, maybe he missed a bunch of games and I didn't see, whatever. LeBron, so I switched LeBron to a point guard for y'all that were wondering. I told y'all I was going to make positions, positions. LeBron made an All-NBA first team for the first time in his career, and his numbers are insane. 32, 8, and 8 and a half. Luka Doncic, you saw his already. Tim Duncan, you saw his already. Yao, making All-NBA teams, though his team is, is bad. He's been 50, 40, 90, four years in a row. This is the offseason if I'm the Nets that I'm trying to go out there and get him some help. It has to be. It has to be. They made the playoffs. Oh, boy. Can we see some Dirk? All right. So the Bulls were the one seed. I, I can't believe it. But it's parity. One game difference between them and the Wizards. Two game difference between them and the Pacers. So there's parity out east. Out west, there's also some parity. I mean, we haven't seen the one seed win a championship at all, I don't think. So it's always been parity. It's always been 25 game. You can't see this. You can't see this. 25 game loser streak to end the season for the Miami Heat. We should have just traded stuff on Marbury to Kobe to play with Kobe, bro. 25 games in a row is ridiculous. I don't care who on your roster. To lose 25 game, man, that's a record in the association. And with all that being said, the Raptors still ended up being worse. I mean, same record, but lower on the standings. Makes no sense. The Raptors, again, bad. Jalen Johnson, crazy numbers, but bad. Oh, but none of them could compare to this Warriors team. They had the rookie of the year in Kawhi Leonard. Shout out to him. But the Nick Young, uh, Richard Hamilton. Rip Hamilton has to get traded. I'm sorry. And the Jared Butler and Jade, Jaden Spring. This team was awful. The Clippers, awful. And what class is this again? Did we load in the class? I don't even remember. Ah, it's been... Jalen Brown, DeJounte Murray, some guy, Brandon Ingram, Jamal Murray. Uh, DeJount, did I say DeJounte or Jamal twice? Either way, solid draft class up top. Once we get to the weeds, it becomes less solid. But you know what? Like, these are NBA players. These are players that played long NBA careers. The Matzo Bowen sitting at 17 is crazy. It's crazy. All right, this should be a class that you want to tank for a little bit, I guess. You can get Ben Simmons. And this version of Ben Simmons might be really, 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 really good. The Wizards and the Jazz come in with the most momentum with six games straight for both of them. All right. Um, I really want to try to jump in as many games as possible here. So I'm going to try my best to catch one. Game one between the Wizards and the Nets is here. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This should be fun. This should be a lot of fun. Just make sure that everybody's got the team in that they should. Um, we get to see Dirk play basketball finally. And everybody has at least close to their best lineup out there. David Johnson will be getting rid of you and putting in uh, Moses Moody. And that's going to be it. Everybody else should be good. Let's see. Four-point game with a little over a minute to go. Or is that one minute? Two, two and a half minutes to go. We've definitely seen this Wizards team play a little bit of basketball before because they seem to be in high leverage situations all the time. But I'm really just here for Dirk. I want to see what 41 does. Does he get the ball at all? Because sometimes, you know, you get the tendency that these dudes not touching it. Double team comes... Here is Karan Butler, who's taking some big shots in this uh, this simulation before. What are they going to do? There's a screen from DeAndre Aiden. Butler, mid-range jump shot. No, he gives it up to DeAndre. DeAndre's guarded by a smaller defender, but they go to the mismatch. Busy gets dropped off. Karan Butler is crazy, huh? Um, He's only got 15 tonight, but that was an elite-level shot. It's just Al Thornton and Dirk show. 
that shot makes it seven points with two minutes to go. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I want to see what Dirk and them can do, but it already ain't looking good based off that one shot. Jason Preston is the best point guard on the team. Hashtag free Dirk. If you got to this point in the video, tweet hashtag free Dirk because the bro brother needs some help. Look at that. Nobody's there to help him even on this possession. He gives it up to Jason Preston. Give it, re retouch. He went away from the ball. Went away from the ball. Five seconds to go in the shot clock. Here's Jason Preston. Mid-range jump shot. Not a bad looking shot, but it is a miss. If they score right here, we walking out of here and say this is an L opportunity to watch Dirk and them play. I mean, they haven't even let Vince Carter touch the ball yet because they haven't needed to. You know, it's Karan Butler and others. Here we go. Jason Preston again. There's a screen right there for Mr. Moody. You got to get 41 the ball again. Thank you. Go to work. Go to work. Go to work, Dirk. Go to work, Dirk. High off the glass. Let's go, Dirk. Let's go. That was beautiful. That's beautiful hoops, man. That's beautiful hoops. Oh, man. I miss watching Dirk play in real life. Here we go. Vince Carter trying to get downhill. He does. He's just half, half of a man. And he's also half amazing. He's also insane. Or Vince, Vince Sanity. All right. Well, it's back to a seven. If they don't score in this possession, I'm going to walk out of here because I, I don't think there's a real chance that they go out here and do something crazy. But um, I could be wrong. But I doubt it. I doubt it. And the Jason Preston, I'm assuming. There it is. Number 15. Or is it 18? Oh, my God. He's wearing number 18. Okay. I thought that was a 15. Here it is. Dirk. Again on the block. High block. What are you going to do? Oh, Carlos Boozo with the stop. Man, pick up his dribble. Repost. Repost. He don't have nobody on the perimeter that, he, that we care about. You know what I'm saying? Dirk with the pop. What he's going to do? He gives up to Al. Al's been the, the high hand so far tonight. And that's no good. If they go down and uh, score right here, it's completely over. I will get out of here. And move on to the next game and or series. Aiden with some good positioning on Dirk. Dirk, oh man, no Dirk. Don't don't get the, oh man, oh man, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, Dirk. You didn't let me down at all. Um, your, t your team let us down. Your team let us down. I'm going to say that. Because he gave us one high off the glass, you know. How, how much can one man do? How much can one man do? High off the glass is good enough. From winning the lottery two years ago to one of the favorites to make some noise. Is this going to be a close game to watch Braun play? The answer is no. No, it had potential. It had a lot of potential, but it fell through. This team, this this is like a conference finals matchup in my opinion. If we get this in the first round, we eat it, bro. NBA fans is eating. This Seattle team may have underperformed the regular season, but we know they're good. As you can see, we know they're really, really good. Luke and company might end up getting eliminated first round. I ain't going to say it's, it's a not out of round possibility. This has a lot of really good players. The Knicks are up 3-0 on the Orlando Magic. Can they make this sweep happen? Uh, the answer is probably New York. It looks like you're advancing to the second round. Carmelo Anthony is finally the full-time starter. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, the Magic looked really good and really promising earlier in the series, and now they kind of fumbling and can't get out of the first round. But, yeah, Carmelo's here. And he's looking good. He's shooting 64% from three in those first four games. So, you know, these are looking incredible for them. Here we go. Again, another series that could be wrapped up right here right now. Dirk and them just don't have enough. But we might get another opportunity to watch them go head-to-head. -head. And six-point game, 12-point game. They stay alive. They stay alive. Uh-oh. I like that. Wasn't good enough, though. <laughs> yeah. They got eliminated. LeBron and company have their back against the wall. As the two seed, they are down three to one in this series. And they might go out. We'll jump. Three minutes to go. Three point game. That's good enough. Can we see LeBron and company keep things alive? Let's see what lineups are out here. Franz Wagner. Okay, okay. We got to get Mikael Bridges back into the game. Cool. And Thaddeus Young. Former first overall pick, Thaddeus Young, if you forgot. Get him back in the game. All right. And we need to get Corey Maggette back in the game here. Um, Wilson Chandler got to go. We put Paige at the two or, oh, okay. Corey McGann is actually listed as a two. That's interesting. There we go. All right. So everybody should have their best lineup out the next day of ball. Two point game, three minutes to go. Of course, remember the Timberwolves went out and signed Ben Wallace last off season. Marvin Bagley has been really good in this association. You also got Paige Stoyakovich, who of course, you know, as a flamethrower slash bucket, do it all type player. And this is Baron Davis getting downhill. Midi jump shot. Baron Davis, no good. Oh, my God. Franz Wagner hit a three. I looked away and looked back, and Franz Wagner has hit a three. And just like that, the Spurs are up by one with two minutes to go. My bad, y'all. I would not look away again. We are locked in. We are locked in completely, I promise. Baron Davis is tired, but hey, 
If you win this game, you get a lot of rest as you wait for the other team to advance to the second round. So fight through it, Baron. Fight through it. I mean, they're giving you the ball to create against LeBron. And Braun is, is – that's a big lineup when you think about it, a really big lineup. And there's been Wallace. That's probably why Ben Wallace shoots 30% from the field. He just missed his first shot every time, gets his own rebound. Braun with the ball, gives it up to form a first overall pick. That, uh, that is shot with a good pass. Franz Wagner with an amazing cut. Bar Bagley has how many? Franz and Bagley are going back and forth, 36-33. Sheesh. All right, all right. A, a battle nobody expected to happen. We here. We here for it. I want to see Paja get an opportunity to showcase some stuff. Instead, they gave it down to Corey, who goes up with a hook. No good. The Spurs running and gunning. That's what they do best. I think I'm making stuff up. I have no idea. Are they a fast tempo team? They got LeBron at the one. LeBron get downhill. Pass up to Mr. Wagner. And he looks away. Oh, my God. Franz Wagner with the look away three. Woo. Look at him. It's still in the air. Hold on. Let me get the right. Let me get the right camera angle. Oh, my God. Give me the right camera angle, 2K. That's the best we could do. He looks away from it. Ooh. That's so bad, man. What a creative, creative shot by LeBron. Get into the basket, sucking in the defense, and throwing it out. This is a crucial possession right here in Minnesota. Don't let the Spurs get back into this series because this right here will give them a ton of momentum. A ton of momentum to make something happen. Here we go. Screen for Bagley. Mid-range jump shot. Corey Maggette bottoms. Huge shot, Mr. Maggette. Huge shot. Kiss it back to four. All right, so I told you I was locked in, correct? I'm not. Thaddeus Young just turned the ball over. Baron Davis and yoinks. And now they go the other way. Oh, my God. What a turnover for Mr. Former first overall pick. McGetty for three. And it's... Oh, it's a long two. What in the early 2000s? The man just shot the longest two in the history of hoops. Look, look, look where he at. Look where he shot this ball from. If you don't go half of a centimeter, but look where his feet are at. Half a centimeter. Look, oh, man, you just fumbled. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. But obviously, three is greater than two. All right, Mikel Bridges with the ball. First time we've seen him get a touch. Up comes Franz Wagner. I was about to say, if he hit that win, I was, woo, that boy would be different. All right, here we go. Bagley gives it up to Corey Maggette. Corey Maggette's been the hot hand so far. I would not get it out of it. I mean, he's, he's been guarded by Mikel Bridges, who's really good. Maggette, same shot he said before. He missed it this time. Oh, he's hit that shot. We've seen him hit that shot. This time he missed it. LeBron with the back door. Tweaking. He hit the shot. That's all that matters. Tripping. LeBron's supposed to be yam. You know, the famous LeBron type dunk. Instead, he wants to stop and pop and green release to green release. Big time possession for Minnesota right here. No basket means a loss. More likely than not. So let's see what they do. There's Baron Davis with the ball top of the key. No longer need the Gatorade break, but he is guarded by Braun. I saw that. I thought there was a window. There it is. That's the window. No good from Bagley. And it's probably the season. Oh, I'm sorry, the game. Uh, Bagley's a 27% three-point shooter. He can hit those. You probably don't want that to be the shot that potentially determines a game. But so be it. LeBron is going to the line. I'm assuming that he's at least knocking down one of these, and that's probably too much for them. And I was right. There we go. We got to see Braun in action, but more than that, we got to see Franz Wagner in action. The Sonics win game one and then lose all the rest of the games in the series. Luka's just a monster, and the one seed does advance. The Pacers are up in this series 3-2. to two. They have a one-point lead with two minutes to go. Beautiful. Op oh, my God. Why is everybody off the court? Um, get Sharif Cooper out of the small four position, please. Thank you. Um, Aaron Holiday. Do you put in Ricky Davis? I guess it depends on who's having the better game. Let's let's quickly see that. Uh, Ricky Davis has more points. We'll just we'll say that was the better, even though he has five turnovers. We'll say that's the better game so far. And on the other side, things were pretty good. So uh, we only had to make one substitution. All right, so we're good. We're, we're ready to simulate, baby. I mean, we're ready to watch. Three-two series lead again for the Pacers. Um, but both of these teams have made deep runs before, and the core is pretty much the same. Yao Ming is being guarded by Drew Eubanks. I can kind of imagine what's going to happen from here. I would be correct. That's what I was imagining. Here are the numbers for this game so far. If you're wondering, cool. Uh, as, you, as you remember, Jason Richardson is an all-time playoff performer in this association. He's had a 50-piece in a winner-go-home game. He's been amazing. And he also has a bunch of points tonight, too. So he, he is just one of them boys that you want. When, when your back is against the wall, you want him on your team. I already forgot who had the lead in the series. I can't lie to you. So uh, <laughs> I'm watching this. 
Oh my God, he's wide open. Nope. Well, I don't know who that is over there on the wing, but he was wide open for a second. Tim Duncan versus Jaron. Wow. Uh, Jaron Jackson Sr. once told me that his... Oh my God, good defense from Yao. Jaron Jackson Sr. once told me that his son was Tim Duncan with a jump shot. And now we get to see... The, that's a true story. Now we get to see them go against each other in a 2K simulated game. That's a very that's a very true story that I did not make up. I promise you, he did say that to me. Uh, so here we go. We get to see who is who is this? I'm sorry. Is that I, I, I'm tripping? That's not Jalen Rose, is it? Jaylen, that looked too small. Is that Barbosa? Is that D Fish? It's probably D Fish. That's D Fish. All right, it's D Fish. Got gotcha. you. All right, D Fish. What you gonna do? Try to give Timmy a post touch? Yes. 21 with the ball. Let's see what he does. Backing him down, backing him down, right over Jared. No good, but offensive board goes right back up. What we figured out is that the offensive rebounding in this game is OP. And it has won some people some playoff series, literally. It has won playoff series with a good offensive board. yao has got too good of a position. Drew Eubanks with the interception. Team up by one. Drew Eubanks just came in super, super clutch. Let's see what happens from here. Uh, Derek Fisher just not passing the ball. He has one read. And he tried to force it to him. Didn't happen. They're forcing it to Tim. Tim say, no, I'm not here for that. A back down for Gerald Wallace who goes right out of bounds. Sean Marion put the clamps on him. The Yao play is so OP. You just got to find him. If he can catch the ball, he will score. Watch. Oh, there's a double. A quick double. What did I say? If he can catch the ball, he's going to score. If he can catch the ball, he's going to score. 38 seconds left in the game. Let's see exactly what... Wallace does with it on the inbound. He gives it up to Tony Parker, who should have been in the game earlier, but he wasn't, and he immediately gets to the basket like it's nothing. I didn't even realize that Tony Parker was just sitting on the bench, um, but he comes in, and he immediately makes an impact. Who would have thought? 90-plus overall player. So here we go. Yao Ming, force pass, does get to him. He goes right over everybody. It's a cheat code. It's a cheat. If we if we watched every game, they would go 82-0 plus 16-0 in the playoffs. Because he is such a cheat code, just give him the ball. Now, when we simulate, they don't do that. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that when we simulate. So, he don't get those opportunities. But, a lob? Why are we throwing a lob there? Isaiah Thomas, what are you drawing up? Are they serious? 22 seconds left. It's only a one-point game, so even two made free throws, is still a chance that something happens, but... I'm, I'm disappointed that we get a lob threat out of all things. No timeouts. They, he missed one of those free throws. So only a one bucket is all it takes to go to OT. A three-point shot, of course, wins it. Let's see what they do. They're going to try to give it down to 21. Oh, my God. Almost turned over. Post. Touch. Tim goes up. And that is a foul on Jaron Jackson Jr. Oh, man. The whistle came through. Was it a foul? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, I mean, you can say that that right hand at the bottom, he's getting them on the body maybe. But that look clean up top. A good whistle, bad whistle. I could tell fans will be mad at this. Tim Duncan is money from the line too. But with six seconds to go, I don't know if you have any timeouts. With six seconds to go, there's plenty of time to make something happen. Here we go. Six seconds to go. Who do you give the ball to? I have an idea who you try to get the ball to. They do it. Three seconds, the double comes. He gives up to Jaren, who takes a dribble, takes the shot, and he wins the game. Jaren Jackson Jr. with the buzzer beater in the playoffs. And they're chasing. Why did he take the dribble? He knows his game more than anybody. He takes the dribble, takes the contest, and makes it. And the crowd and him are going crazy. Detroit basketball. That shot forced the game seven, man. That shot forced the game seven. And if they... This man had 12 fouls. Jaren. Jaren, gang. What is happening? He had 354 fouls this, se this season. 350... Hold on. Let me, let me do some calculation. That means if he played every game this season, he averaged 4.3 fouls a game. That is crazy. Now, if you're new around here, we turned off foul outs. He did play every game. Because in 2K simulation, everybody fouls out all the time. This is, I think you should be able, if you go over 10, you know, if you go over 10, then I feel like there's got to be some type of rule. Um, and if it was normal settings, they lose because he don't, he's not there to hit the game when it's shot. That's actually insane. Okay, uh, more game sevens, I'm hoping. We have a bunch of game sevens, um, which we're in love with. We love that. We love that we got a bunch of game sevens. 
This is a game six, by the way, not a game seven. This one right here, LeBron and company versus the Timberwolves. And it looks like the Wolves are going to walk out of there with a win, which is a series win for the seventh seed. LeBron had a really good game. Franz Wagner fell off after that really promising 30 point game to even get to that point. Didn't happen. So we have three game sevens, including the game or the series that we just walked out of. We're in Indianapolis with it. Uh, two Midwest teams. And right now, Detroit has all of the momentum. And will it be enough for us to jump into? It will not. Detroit basketball does come back down 3-2 and win the series. That's, that's man. Jason did not come through like he normally would. And Yao Ming was unstoppable. Also, nine fouls for Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, <laughs> insane. Um, here we go in another game seven, the Suns versus the Mavericks. And it looks like the Suns are going to walk out of there with a convincing win, which means that T-Mac, Dwayne Wade and company have advanced a past uh, Jermaine O'Neal. This team was, not that it's bad, it's kind of boring. It's, it's kind of a boring team. No disrespect. It's kind of a boring team. The last game seven is our defending champions going in against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, so let's see if they can do the thing. So far, so good for them. And like they might be advancing unless there's a huge run coming out of Denver. And it did, but it wasn't enough. Four point loss. And just like that, we have our uh, semifinals. Uh, I'm sorry, our second round set. The Knicks are down 3 2, y'all. And if this stays the way it is, a minute to go, one point game. Hey, tell me I ain't the GOAT on the sticks and no way to jump in and we're in. Somebody's at the free throw line like they always are. Uh, let's make sure everybody's good. Like, why is Karan Butler not in the game right now? I don't know. Right, get to see some more New York Knicks basketball. It's been a few seasons the last time we saw him. And now, Carmelo's really in the form. He missed the layup. Last time we jumped in, it was the Allen Iverson show. He didn't pass the ball. That was Melo getting to the basket. And again, the Washington will just continue to be a team that we just see every single day. But here it is. They're up by two with less than a minute to go. Turnover, Vince Carter trying to force feed it. Carmelo with the ball. Carmelo, what he gonna do? Hezzy. Trying to get past the big fella. Takes the midi. And it's green. Tie game. 40 seconds to go. Oh, man. Again, the Knicks are down in this series. 3-2, to two, I think. Or 3-1, to one, maybe. I don't know. They're, just know that they're down. And if they lose this, they lose the series. And Vince Carter. No good. Tyson Chandler with the board. We got a game. We got ourselves a game. Oh, my God, Carmelo. What a ballsy shot, Melo. In the transition to just pull up like that? All right, all righty there, buddy. Last possession of the game, potentially. They got Boozer being guarded by Allen Iverson. If you don't get that man that ball and clear out, thank you. Thank you. Play basketball. Play basketball. DeAndre Ada one more. You, Why did he not one more? I, I think the other way was Collins. So, actually, I'm taking DeAndre Ada's shot there. Oh, never mind. Because he didn't budge. Yeah. That's great defense from the Knicks, man. That's great defense from the Knicks to force the, the ball out of the hands with a double. And with one second to go, they call timeout. New York has a chance. New York has a chance. One second to go. You got to do something. They get the ball to Carmelo. That's a good look, Carmelo. In and out. We go to overtime, which is something I am not sitting here to wait for. But we go to overtime. Let's see what happens. Back and forth, back and forth. The Knicks are up, but they're not anymore with a minute to go. Now we get to see it again, baby. We get to see it again. All right, so starting point guard Davion Mitchell is in the game, and they give him the ball. All right, let's see what Davion Mitchell can do. He's got a whole side to the court to himself. Are we ice on? Nope, we're getting the post touch to Carmelo Anthony. Who's going to shake? Who's going to get the left hand and woo out of the post? One minute, one point game. One minute, one point game. Mr. Vince Sanity with the ball, guarded by Allen Iverson. I still hate that this is a thing, but when you have two small guards, one of them is delegated to, to guard somebody significantly taller than them. There is Vince Carter off the screen. Bang. Huge shot. I mean, I, I saw it leaving his fingertips, and I knew it was in. Melo's turned into Allen Iverson where he ain't passed the ball once. Not one time. Not one time a pass from Carmelo Anthony. He's, he's Antoine Walker. You know, Antoine Walker from a few episodes ago was not passing either. His brother was just taking as many shots as he wants. I mean, it's each his own, I guess. But, bruh, eventually you got to do a little some passing, right? You got to hit that A button at least one or two times. Nope, not in this universe. Vince Carter, that three would be huge. No good. The Knicks call timeout. One 
Shot clock left. Davion, they're doing the same thing. Getting Melo the ball on the block and saying, go to work, Melo. Will he actually do it again? He passes it out to Tyson Chandler, who gives it up to Allen. Oh, man. Once that ball get an AI hand, you know it's going up. You know it's going up. He gets fouled, though. He worked it to perfection, man. Hit these two free throws. You might walk out of here, you know, with another game. They go to the first one. Second one, up and in as well. Timeout Wizards. Karan Butler for three. Missed it. Karan Butler had a... That's a really good look, all things considered. Vince Carter kicks it out. Melo kind of late on the contest. That's a shot that we know that can be made. And instead of the series ending, we, it lives to see another day. It lives to see another day. Karan was great tonight. Why? Why did DeAndre Aiden take 12 threes? Why did he take 12 threes? I'm, I don't understand. Oh, well, he took 400 in the regular season. Okay. All right. I ain't too mad no more. He's... Oh. Oh. That's... Oh. Different universe. Different universe. I, I, I was unfamiliar with his game. I was unfamiliar with his game. 12 threes is not that bad. So that means that shot that he did take was actually incredible. Considering the fact that he's now a three-point shooting guy. The Lakers are up 3-1 on Luka Doncic's team. Uh, the one seed might fall again. And the Lakers might make another run. Now, this, I don't know if it's happening in this game. It don't look like it's happening in this game. Uh, yeah, it's not happening in this game. But, I, I mean, it's a possibility that it might happen in the near future. Wolves get eliminated by the Suns. Um, so this is the first time we're going to see Dwayne Wade and T-Mac go a little bit further. This man, Seku Decker, is just here all day, every day. I see him so much. <laughs> shout out to him, I guess. Uh, shout out to him. The Knicks fall. 10-point loss. Um, good series by them, I think. But the better team did walk out of there is, is winners. Uh, another 3-2 right here. I don't, have we seen Luka play yet in this? I know we've seen him win two MVPs. But have we seen him actually play? And this might be the opportunity. Trey Young versus Luka Doncic. It didn't happen. Another 10-point win for the Lakers. And from the 4 seed, they are primed to make another run. Joe Kim Noah with 10 offensive boards. It's going to be hard to win a game if you're giving up 10 offensive boards, man. It just is. So our Bulls team going against the Yao Ming and company. I need to watch one of these games, man. Kevin Garnett versus Yao Ming. I need that. It's just got to happen. And it don't like it will. Like the Bulls are going to walk out losers. Yep. They're going to walk out losers. Man. They have potential. They have potential. Uh, Kevin Durant with the stinker. Klay Thompson with the stinker. And that was game six. But I guess game six, Clay does not exist in this universe. So our conference finals is the Wizards versus the Pistons. I think this is a rematch to some extent. And on the other side, we got Wade and company. Uh, Wade and T-Mac versus the LA Lakers. Who again, lost Rashad Lewis at free agency. And it didn't matter. They're, they're back here. They're up 3-0. Three, three, oh. They're up 3-0 oh on Wade. And, and none of the games have been close. None of the games have been Look at it. Look at the Lakers. Bro, what the heck? None of the games were close, bro. That is insane. The Lakers are back in the finals. They, their team does not look like a championship team, and yet they're four games away from doing it again. Here is uh, this matchup. The Detroit Pistons have won two championships in our association so far. They stay alive after being down 3-1. Okay, can we have a 3-1 comeback right here? Am I rooting for Detroit? Maybe. Maybe. Just because I like history. It ain't happening. The Wizards have also won a championship this year on this simulation. And boy, they just put the smack down in this game. Sheesh. Uh, Vince Carter. Wow. NBA Finals is that team versus... I can tell you which team I think is better, but that hasn't meant anything yet to the to the uh, Lakers. It hasn't meant anything. They've been just able to win. This is just a winning team slash org, whatever you want to call it. The Lakers have been doing their thing. Game one, it's not close. Game two, wasn't close. We do all of this to get to the finals, and the finals never live up to no hype at all. This has potential. It had potential. It, it's just not, they just are just so dominant. They're just so dominant. They're up 3-0 again. I don't, okay, don't like it's going to sweep is going to happen. But sheesh. This team has been on a crazy run, and we get to watch some NBA Finals. And they they got the lead again, by the way. They first quarter, they were awful. Since then, they've been really good. I feel I'm happy for Joe Kim Noah. Two years in the league, potential two championships. That's elite. You know, they're not winning it without his rebounding. You saw that one game where he had all the offensive boards. One point game with a minute and a half to go. Trey Young, Terrence Mann, and uh, Josh... 
J I'm sorry, Josh. Jalen Green on the court. Trey Young trying to get to the basket. He goes right over Aiden. Did not uh, make the shot because it wasn't a good one. It wasn't a good shot. Alou being guarded by Trey Young. Um, small lineup for the Lakers. Karan Butler, huge shot. Missed it. DeAndre Aiden with the tip in. One minute to go. Big time bucket from DeAndre Aiden. I ain't even looked to see what the story of the game was. Jalen Green is the high hand, and then on the other side is kind of by committee. Got you. Kind of by committee. All right. Could the Lakers close it out in four? Big possession coming up right here. Um, here's a screen from Joe Kim. Didn't hit anybody, but Trey Young still got the midi off, and that's a green. Karan Butler coming off the screens. You know what he want to do. Karan got one thing in mind. Oh, my God. He passed it, and Ty Lue just hit a wide open three. Why did they sink on Ty Lue so much like he can't shoot? I mean, I ain't saying he's the best shooter of all time. But, yeah, he shot 30. He's shooting 35% of the playoffs. Okay, in the regular season, he was off. But in the playoffs, he's shooting 35%, which you'll take. That's a very good look. They're up by two now. That could have just saved a season. Um, he gave it right back. No, he didn't. Good defense, Ty Lue. DeAndre Aiden to Karan Butler to Booz Cruz. Guarded by Marcus Pfizer. Give it back up. Yep, give it to Karan. Karan cooked in. Or give it to Vince Carter, who also got a mismatch. Karan right over the top of Jalen Green. And that might be all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. It is. The Wizards survive uh, to see another day. 3-1 series lead. Could they come back? No. They can't. And Trey Young this time wins the finals MVP, man. That is the end of the, what, 2018 season? I think that's the end of the 2018 season. Who's retiring? Gary Payton, P.J. Brown, David Wesley, Eddie, jo Eddie Jones, um, Gary Trent Sr., and Bruce Bowen, who ain't been in the plan for the last couple seasons. Wow. Well, again, this draft class is Ben Simmons and Company. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. And we'll be back in a few days to get the next session done. I'll see y'all soon.